Somebody will say amen again. Anybody know the Lord's been faithful? been faithful to anybody. In the book of Luke, chapter 8. Book of Luke, chapter 8. Verse, verse 22, book of Luke, chapter 8, verse 22. Ah. I am persuaded, Lord, to love you. I have been changed to bless your name. I am constrained. Come on, sing this thing like you wrote. I am persuaded. Somebody get in this word. Can we sing that one more time? I, I am persuaded. Say, I, Lord, to love you. I can change, change to bless. I am constrained. This great gospel forever. Come on, can we sing that one more time? Come on, lift your voice. Come on. I am persuaded, say, Lord, to love. I have been changed. Come on, forever, forever to work. Hallelujah, forever to work. Come on, one more time, forever to work.
I just had to get that out because I was I was disturbed when I turned on the news yesterday and folk that planned to come back home didn't make it. Let me get in this word, the book of Luke, chapter 8. And I want to lift a couple verses starting at verse 22. The book of Luke, chapter, chapter 8. And starting at verse 22 from the New Living Translation, this is what the word says. One day, Jesus said to his disciples, let's cross to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and started out. As they sailed across, Jesus settled down for a nap. But soon a fierce storm came down on the lake. The boat was filling with water and they were in real danger. The disciples went and woke him shouting, Master, Master, we're going to drown. When Jesus woke up, he rebuked the wind and the waging waves. Suddenly the storm stopped and all was calm. Verse 25, then he asked them, where's your faith? The disciples were terrified and amazed. Who is this man? They asked each other. When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. Right, let me just read that one more time. They, they said, who's this man? When he gives a command, even the wind and waves obey him. I just want to, for a couple minutes, just talk about how to survive a storm. How to survive a storm. Would you pray with me? Father, thank you for another chance. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated in the presence of God. I just want to welcome and give God praise for the presence of Pastor Julian Johnson and his wife Melissa from the Hillside SDA Church in Birmingham, Alabama. Would you stand? And Pastor Johnson and his wife uh, Melissa are here with us. We give God praise for, for their presence here today. Uh, those of you that were here for our last Thanksgiving Day service, remember what a mighty word he gave to us uh, on that day. How to survive a storm. I just got one question for you before I get into this worm. Uh, how many are in a storm right now? Lord have mercy. I, that's, that's a whole lot of y'all. I'm not talking about uh, you got a, a, a toenail that just is hurting or something is bothering you. I'm talking about you in a real storm right now. I'm talking right now at, at 1234 p.m., you find yourself right now in a storm. Can I just see your hand? Oh, oh, okay. If you're in a storm right now, this word is just for you. I promise. God help me preach this thing right through in here. I promise if you listen to what God wants to teach you today, no matter what storm you find yourself in, you're going to get through. I just helped you right there. You missed what I just said. If you listen to what the word is trying to teach you, you're going to get through whatever storm you find yourself in. The Bible says that uh, Jesus had been teaching from town to town and bringing deliverance to people in one way or the other. And he seemingly tired for the demands of ministry. So he says to his disciples, let's get in a boat and go to the other side of the lake. Okay, you miss. I just helped you. He said, let's get in a boat and let's go to the other side of the water. Okay, you missed it. In other words, he, he said, let's get away from the crowd. Let, let's get as far away as we can from people be, because people mean well, but sometimes people just mean. Let's, let, let's get away as far as we can because people can pour into you, but people can also drain you. Let's Let's get away from people because people can bless you, but people can also cuss you. Let, let, let's get on the way to, to the other side because there are people that will shout Hosanna, but the same folk will say 
crucify him. I'm talking a lot better than you than you're talking about. He said, let's get away from people because the more you do for people, the more you need from God. I just helped you. The more you do because 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 work is demanding and church sometimes don't do it and family can get annoying and friends don't understand. Can I suggest to somebody that every so often you need to go find a place where there's nobody around but you and Jesus. I just have, can, can I suggest today that, that every once in a while you find a place where there's nobody around but you, no, no iPod, no iPad, or get alone with no computer and no phone. I want to suggest that if you're going to have strength for the journey. Anybody need some strength today? You're going to need to find a place alone with Jesus. No Facebook and no Twitter. Uh, a place without television, Netflix or DVDs and music. Allow the peace of Jesus to guard your heart and mind. Anybody need strength to the journey? Maybe all you can do is take a morning and even if you have to fight for it, go and get yourself in a spiritual boat and allow the Holy Ghost to transport you to some place place where all you can do is get alone with Jesus. The choir can't do it and the pastor won't always be able to help you. You know I'm talking Pastor Johnson. The pastor can't always be there but if you can just find a place alone with Jesus, the presence of God can do more than anybody can do because the word says that in the presence of God is the fullness of joy. Somebody in here just needs to maybe take five minutes out of their day and just get in some corner, some bathroom, some, some place where only person that's around is you and Jesus. No phone, no face, no computer, just you and Jesus by yourself. Can you lean on your neighbor and say, get by yourself? He, he had just, he, he had just finished preaching and, and, and because the crowds had never heard anybody talk like this before, they latched on to him because anybody who has experienced Jesus before knows that when you get a hold of him, you don't want to let him go. So the Bible says that they get in a boat and they begin to go to the other side. But Jesus is so tired. You missed what I just said. I just helped you because sometimes you're so tired, you can't even pronounce the whole word. you you just tired. You know, you can't get the whole thing out. You're just so tired. But the Bible says he goes to sleep in the boat. <laughs> and, and as he's sleeping, can't, can't you just hear his disciples? Can't, can't you just hear Peter saying, well, why, why couldn't he just wait till he got to the other side to go to sleep? I, I mean, we've been working with him along with him and we ain't sleep we we still awake we, we still getting the boat to the other side can't can't you just hear his the can't you just hear thomas talking i doubt he's really that tired i i doubt jesus that you that we've been working to jesus and we're not i doubt can't you just hear peter uh james and john arguing about who is the best sailor on the boat and meanwhile judas judas is saying i wonder how much money we can get if we turn this boat in and, uh, and, and, and as they sail, watch this, please don't miss this, a huge storm comes on the sea so that the boat is in danger. Okay, can I ask you a question? What, what do you do when everything is fine one day, but out of control the next? Okay. What, what, what do you do? What, what do you do when everything is fine and, and you feel somewhat in a comfort zone and then all of a sudden after nowhere you your, your world is just spinning out upside down and out of control you are doing fine one day and then the next day you got to deal with funerals finances and frustration you are doing all right can i talk to somebody today who's in a place of confusion and bewilderment and possibly defeat is there anyone here today who remembers when you used to smile but all you can do now is muster up tears anybody in here who can remember Remember the days when you were lender, but now all you do is borrow. I don't know who you are, but I suspect there's somebody in here today that's about to give up and you're about to throw in the towel. There's somebody that came to 
church today and you said, Lord, if that preacher don't say something to help my existential plight, I'm going to give up and throw in the towel. But just before you give up and just before you throw in the towel, can I remind you of one thing? Jesus is in the boat. Oh, God. I, I, can I get can God help me preach this thing right through here? Don't you ever forget that Jesus is right there in the boat. And even though he's sleeping, a sleeping Jesus is more powerful than any awake human. Can, can I remind somebody here today, don't you ever forget that whatever you go through and whatever you're dealing with, Jesus is right there in the boat. Can you lean on your neighbor and say, he's right there, he's right there. In case you forgot today, I, I stopped by here to remind you that whatever you in, Jesus is right there. But watch this because every storm is a teaching moment. Please, please don't miss this. What you do before your storm prepares you for your storm. Back. What you do before your storm prepares you for when the storm hits. You can't tell me that those folk that left to go to the theater in Aurora, Colorado knew that it was going to be their last day alive be, because I, I, I don't believe that all storms are orchestrated by the devil, but sometimes the devil sends some stuff your way. So sometimes he sends some stuff right down your alley. That's, that, that, that's why every day before you leave the house, you got to make sure, Dwayne, that you're covered in the blood of Jesus. I, I, can I stay here right, right one second real quick? You got to make sure you're covered in the blood. In fact, in the Old Testament, uh, God told Moses, Moses, I want you to tell every man to get a lamb and take the blood of the lamb and cover your house. He told every man, every man stand to your feet right now. Every, every man stand to your feet right now. Okay. God told Moses to tell the folk, I want every man to get a lamb for his house. Okay. Not just for yourself, but for your house. And I want every man to dip their hand in the blood of the lamb. Uh, every man has to have a relationship with the lamb. He said, I want every man to dip their hand in the blood of the lamb because whatever happens in your house is going to happen because of whatever you stick your hand in. So there's some things that ain't going right because of what you stuck your hand in. But I need every man in the house of God today that makes sure before you leave your house to smear your house with the blood of the lamb. Can you shout out, I need a lamb for my house. You may be seated. You, you don't know what's going to happen to you. Don't, you don't know if you're going to get an accident on 495. You don't know if your boss going to go crazy. So before you leave the house, the reality is some storms, though, are orchestrated by God. I know what you're saying. Some of y'all don't like this stuff because you have some stuff going on in your life that you don't like, that you're not feeling. But some stuff comes by God because it's for the singular purpose to draw you closer to Jesus. Okay, I got a question for you today. What is God trying to teach you in your storm? Not, not. Not for your husband, for your spouse, for your children, for your friend, for your co worker No, no, no. What is God trying to teach you through your storm? Because the reality is most of us don't cry out for Jesus until we're in need of Jesus. And if we don't think we need Jesus, then we'll never call on Jesus. And if we never call on Jesus, then we'll never talk 
to Jesus. And if we never talk to Jesus, then we'll never know what Jesus sounds like. And if we never know what Jesus sounds like, then we'll have to hold on to what gets us through. Because when I can't see Jesus, at least I can hold on to what he told me until what he said, I can now see. What are you holding on to through your storm? You've got to have some words, some testimony, some song through God that you know that regardless of what happens in your life, God is going to get you through. Please understand. Okay. Okay. Jesus said, let's go to the other side. You missed it. I... <laughs> he said, let's go to the other side. Come back. It's so simple, you missed it. He said to the disciples, get in the boat. Let's go to the other side. He, he, told, he, he told them before they left, let's go to the, okay. But, but see, you and I, like the disciples, are so stuck on stupid and parked on crazy that we miss, we miss the prophetic word of the master. Okay. He said, let's go. Okay. In other words, I'm not going to tell you everything that's going to happen when we set and sail. I'm not going to tell you what happens between us leaving and getting there. But just know because my word says the destination is the, the destination is the other side. Don't, don't worry about what happens from point A to point B. Just know that I said we're going to the other side and we're going to get there. Okay, you're going to catch it in one second. There are some things going on in your life right now that you don't understand, that you're confused about, but you don't know. But you've got to hold on to the promise of God that says we're getting over to the side. Don't worry about what happens. Just hold on to me. Oh, okay, some of y'all still ain't got it. You, you still ain't got it. There's some things that will happen in your life not because you're cute, not because you go to church, because his word said it. It has nothing to do how much money you return or what ministry you served in or how long you've been in the church. There's certain things that happen because his word said. He said, we're going over and because my word won't return void, anything I say is going to happen. Oh, okay, you're going to catch it in one second. The text says... Man, the storm was so rough that the boat started filling with water. In, in fact, Pastor, uh, history would tell us that the Sea of Galilee is situated in such a valley that it can experience any weather pattern that there is. And some historians have even said the sea has gotten so rough that they have actually seen the Sea of Galilee boil at some points because of the pressure and weather patterns in it the storm is rough but Jesus still sleeps okay you you, you slow but you were okay the storm had to be something serious to catch these fishermen off guard I, I, can I paint the picture for you okay there's lightning there's thunder Water is filling the boat. The storm is going on all around them. And they go to Jesus and say, Jesus, we're about to drown. Okay. Oh, okay, maybe I'm slow because I'll be honest. I'm just realizing to what's happening in the text. Okay, can I paint the picture? They left one side to go to the other side. And while they're sailing, a storm breaks out. Meanwhile, Jesus still sleep. Okay. The worst part of the storm is going on. But Jesus still sleep. 
I, I don't understand. Okay. Okay. Wow, this is, this is something. This is something. In fact, he don't wake up. Till the disciples say, Jesus, we about to drown. Oh, okay, you're you going to catch it in one second. Okay, okay. He's sleeping right through the storm. Okay, listen, listen. I know he's, I know he's God, but his humanity is extremely suggestive in the text by the fact that he sleep. There's a huge storm going on. Anybody got a huge storm in your life right now? I'm talking, okay, listen, listen to me. There's a huge storm going on. Water is coming in the boat, but he's still asleep. Lightning is flashing, but he's still asleep. Thunder is going off, but he's still asleep. Disciples are screaming for fear of their lives, but he, but he's still asleep. Everything, hell is breaking loose on the boat, Elder Smith, but he's still, is there anybody in here that, that, that is experiencing this type of hellish storm? It's going on all around them, but Jesus is still asleep. Okay, you're going to catch it. You catch it. You're going to catch it. Okay. Lord, help me preach this thing right there. Okay. You know what I just realized? Because, Jason, if I'm sleeping in the boat, I'm going to feel the water filling the boat. But he's still asleep. Okay, maybe I'm sorry. I just realized, Sister Phelps, why Jesus sleep. Can I, can I share it with you? I know y'all tired of me. I got to take my seat in a few minutes. Can I just share it with me? Okay. The reason why Jesus is still asleep, Lord God, this revelation, it, it's because he knows that anything he created is subject to his word. So as soon as he needed to open his mouth, whatever Jesus allows or creates, he has authority over because anything that shows up in our lives, Jesus has either created or allowed. So at any time, Jesus has to open up his mouth and cry, peace, be still, because any storm that is around you is not more powerful than the Jesus that's in you. Is there anybody in here that knows that as long as Jesus is in my storm, I can ride safely through the winds of life I don't have to worry, I don't have to fret, I don't have to stress, I don't have to do nothing because he's sleeping in my storm. And as soon as he wakes up, all he's got to do is say peace. Okay, sit down. Sit down, I'm just talking. Sit down, I'm just talking. I'm, I'm, I'm here, sit down. Sit down, I'm just talking. Can I finish this? Can I finish this thing? Can I finish this? Okay, come on, stop, stop, stop. Let me finish this thing. Now, sit down, sit down. I'm just talking. Let me finish the thing. Because I had to ask, Carl, how do I know that Jesus' word has power? How, how do I really know, Brother Thorpe, that the word of Jesus, this is how you're going to get through your storm, has power? Can I give it to you? You know the word of Jesus has power based on his past performance. Okay, you, you missed it. Let me help you. Okay. Okay. So, <laughs> so Jesus is saying, if you need help to get through your storm, what I need you to do is look at my resume. Oh, oh, okay, I'm going to close on this. Okay. Listen. Because it's my resume that will give you confidence to accept my word. Oh, okay. If you ever think my word doesn't have power, take a quick glance at my resume. Oh, okay. Okay. Some, some of us are slow. So let me, let me tell you what a resume is. 
A resume, this dictionary. Resume is a summary of all your, of your experiences and skills to the field of work you're entering. It highlights, Lord God, thank you for this word, your accomplishments to show a potential employer that you are qualified for the work you want. It's, it's not a biography of everything you've done because the word says that they don't have enough paper. Okay. But it gives you just enough so that you have everything you need to make a logical choice. So when you get in a storm, Jesus says, look at my resume. Okay, can, can I give you the master's resume? And I promise I'll take my seat. Okay, at the top of a resume is the objective. And, and his objective is to show you how his word has power. Can I help somebody teach this thing right through here? His objective is to help you see his word has power. But, but, but after the objective is the uh, education. Okay. Can, can I give you Jesus' education? It's not too long because uh, he wasn't educated at any school, but his father taught him everything. Can I help somebody? He, he knew more than the teachers and, and the questions he asked, they couldn't answer. And so after, after your objective and your education comes your work experience. Okay, somebody filled out a resume just this past week. God bless you to get that job that you so well applied for. After that is a work experience, and at Jesus' resume, it's going to say something like this. Uh, his work experience didn't start until he was 30 years old. When he said, fill these pots with water, and the water was turned to wine. That was his word. Uh, giving power. Can I help you? Uh, but as he continued, as this is just his work experience. Uh, one day, uh, he was with a crowd of people, and all that was available was some fish and some loaves of bread. And he said from his word, give that to me. And based on the word of Jesus, he multiplied that food so that it fed over 5,000 people. I'm just giving you his work experience. You you keep looking at his work experience and you'll see somebody named Lazarus who was dead. He was pronounced dead, but at his word, I'm preaching a lot better than you talk. At, at his word, he said, Lazarus, come forth. And he had to be named specific because the word of Jesus is so powerful. Shoot, if I was dead, I would have popped up myself. And, and, and so that's his word that has power. Uh, 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 whenever Jesus speaks, it's power because whenever he opens it, he says one word, let, and, and, and galaxies come. come. But, but can I forget the works in the word and throw you some of your experience you've had with him? Um, uh, he's caused the blind to receive sight and the lame begin walking and the dumb begin speaking and dead are raised up. That's his resume. He causes marriages to come back together and children to come back to God. He causes cancer and diabetes and Lyme disease to say, that's his word. All he got to do is open up his mouth and even though your house got burned down, you get a new one in the name of Jesus. That's his word. His word has power. Is there anybody in here that needs Jesus to speak a word in their life? to open up his mouth and speak over their finances and over their faith and over their job and over their house. Open your mouth, Jesus. We'll take whatever you give us. Can you touch your name and say, open his mouth. I'm so tired of Christians, believers, who don't understand the authority they have. You don't have to wait for no healing service. You don't have to wait for no believers night. But because of your faith and the word of Jesus, you can take your own hand and lay it on your own self and say, God, heal me. You can take your own hand and lay it on your own child and say, demon, get out of my child. You're not gonna have my baby. I pay too much for their clothes. I pay too much for their house. Demon, you're not going to have my child. I spent nine months of labor. I spent all this money in the hospital. Get out of my child. Get out of my house. 
in the name of Jesus. Come on, sit down. I'm finished. Come on, sit down. He said, come on, let me. Y'all tired of me. Let me finish this word. He, he says, he, he says. See, I, I'm so glad I'm not Jesus. Because if I was Jesus in the boat, I would have woke up upset. I don't like when I'm sleeping. I don't, I don't like when I'm asleep. And you know it's a good sleep, Jason, when your mouth open, you know. And I don't like when I'm asleep. And somebody wake me up. Especially if I'm tired. If I was Jesus, I would have leave me alone. Because the reality is this. If the disciples had the faith they profess, they could have spoke to the storm themselves. I ain't got time to deal with that. The word of Jesus said we're going to get over there. Because see, I can't always tell you what's going to happen. I can't tell you What's going to happen? I, don't, I can't tell you if it's going to work out the way you do because if I told you that, then you would hang on to that more than you would me. But I don't want you to hang on to that. I want you to get me. This is what I love about Jesus. When he woke up, he ain't talked to the disciples first. That's what I would have did. I said, leave me alone. He, he spoke to the storm. So he said, I can deal with that later. Ooh, thank you, Jesus. I can deal with healing you later. But what I really need you to do is turn to me. Healing ain't nothing. I can, I can do that. I can bring your child home. I can do all of that. But I need your attention. He, he said to the disciples, where's your faith? Because you can do so much more with faith to believe that Jesus can actually do what he said. Stop trusting yourself. We've lied before. Anybody lied before? Oh, some of y'all lying. One, you're lying now. You're lying now. So, so if you lied before and Jesus never had, how about you at least hook up with somebody that has a resume of telling the truth. And he can carry you to any, how you gonna make it through a storm? Just, just look at his resume. Because if he did it before, he can do it again. So that no matter what storm you're facing, you hold on to the word of Jesus but you have to know it in order to stand on it the disciples forgot what he said because faith would say wait a minute I know I see a storm but I also remember what he told me he said we getting over there so regardless of what storm comes my way I can still hold on to the word of God Anybody believe the word of God today? Come on and bow your heads. I want to pray with you. I know there's somebody in a storm today. But I want to first speak to somebody who is in a storm mainly because you have never accepted Jesus as your personal savior. For those of you that know Jesus, storms can get rough sometimes. But even in the midst of my storm, at least I got him in my boat. Some of us just getting through storms with nothing but a bucket trying to get water out. And you want to say today, you know what? I'm, I'm, I'm tired of getting through my storms of life by myself. And I want to accept Jesus as my personal Savior. If that's you, I just want you to get up and come down. And meet me at the altar. Somebody's going to meet you there. Can you do that? Can you do that? Not for me because you know you need Jesus. You know you need him. You've never accepted him. You want to get out of your seat right now. And come to the altar. There's some things you're experiencing in life right now that you don't like, that you don't understand. 
The devil has you caught up, tied up, and tangled up, and you want to say, you know what? I'm tired of the devil using me. I want to hold on to Jesus' unchanging hand. Is that you? I want you to get out of your seat right now. I'm about to close this appeal. God is giving you this opportunity right now. You could have went to the movie theater and somebody could have came in and shot up you. Without having Jesus. And you want to come down to say, you know what? I don't think I'm covered by his blood. And I want to be covered by his blood. Is that you? I want you to come down. Come on real quick. Don't wait. Don't waste time. You want to be covered by his blood. Come on. I'm about to close. I just, I want to do this for you because God said, his word told me to do this for you. You want to be covered by his blood. And you're tired of getting through life without him. There's somebody here today, things are just not right. And you want to say, Jesus, take the wheel. Is that you? Get out of your seat right now. Maybe you've accepted him, but you've left him. You've accepted him, but you left him. And you want to say, Jesus, take the wheel. Come on, I'm about to close. I just want to give you this opportunity. Come on, Jesus, take the wheel, please. Come on, I need somebody praying. I need somebody praying. You're in a storm right now. And your storm is not going to stop until somebody says peace. Only thing that's going to stop your storm is peace. But how many know you can be in the midst of a storm and if Jesus is in your boat, come on, I don't know who you are. You wasn't even going to come to church today. But the devil messed up. See, what the devil should have did was kept you home. But now that you're here, Jesus is saying, come on and hook up with me. Yeah. Come on right now. Come on, the power of Jesus is in the room today. He wants to do something for you. Come on, I need, some, I need somebody that knows how to get a prayer through to pray for somebody who needs to turn it over to Jesus today. Come on, pray for somebody else. Listen, pray for that family member who you wish were here, but they're not here. Maybe the power of God will bring them here next week. Come on, you pray for somebody. If you need strength right now to get through your storm, I want you to stand to your feet right now. So you raise your hand at the beginning of this word. You say you're in a storm right now. Why don't you grab the hand of somebody? Some of you, your storm is so huge. The minute you open your mouth about it, you'll start crying. It's too much. some time with Jesus right now. I am grateful for the victories he won. I could go on and on and on about your word. Praise you, Lord. Come on, flowing from.
from my heart flowing from my heart come on Lord we got some issues today are the issues of my heart his gratefulness come on have some time with Jesus right now Somebody needs Jesus to speak over their relationship, over their job. I am grateful for the things. Come on, have some Jesus time right now. Have done. Yes, I'm grateful for the victories we won. something in your life. Come on, let's say grateful. Oh, grateful, 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 is from my heart. you to come down. I want you to leave right now. Follow Elder Smith downstairs. I want you to leave right now. They want to give you something extremely important. Come on, come on, grab somebody's hand. Grab somebody's hand. Come on, grab somebody's hand. 
Father, in the name of Jesus, bless the hand that we hold. The hand that we hold is a miracle. The hand that we hold is in a storm right now. We don't want you to just bless us. We want you to bless the hand that we hold. The hand that we hold has had a rough time. So please, Lord, bless the hand that we hold because we know if you bless the hand that we hold, that we're next in line for a miracle. We bless the hand we hold, oh God. To help us all make it through our storms of life so that when you come, you will recognize us as the ones you have poured your spirit in. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen.